Hello, everyone. This is Scott Bonvasuto, President of Council Vault, and this is our Safe Travels Expert Interview Series. The Safe Travel Campaign is a gun, a safe gun storage and education initiative with the goals of amplifying the voices of safety training and firearm training advocates and spreading public awareness on responsible gun safety measures. This is episode number four in our series, and today we are speaking with Bill Broussard, Senior Director of Communications for the National Firearm Industry Trade Association and Project Child Safe. Bill is in his 25th year with the National Shooting Sports Foundation, where he serves as Senior Communication Director and Media Spokesman on many issues, including sporting, uh, shooting, shooting sport participation, firearm safety, and suicide prevention. Project, Ch Project Child Safe is the largest, most comprehensive firearm safety educational program in the United States. It was developed by the National Su Sh uh, Shooting Sports Foundation, the trade, the trade Association for Firearms in the Industry, and is committed to promoting genuine fire firearm safety through the distribution of safety education messages and, and free firearm safety kits. Welcome, Bill. Glad to have you. I know I said a little bit about you, but can you tell me a little bit more about yourself? Well, uh, first of all, it's great to be here, Scott, and thanks for having us on the show, and thanks for being a supporter of Project Child Safe and uh, promoting uh, responsible gun ownership uh, across the country. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, as you mentioned, uh, I'm in my 25th year at the National Shooting Sports Foundation Trade Association right. for the firearms mm -hmm. industry, and uh, in addition to my uh, communications duties and dealing with the uh, outdoor media, the people who write about hunting and shooting and other pursuits like like fishing. Um, I also uh, oversee NSSF's uh, um, public facing safety programs, which are Project Child Safe and our latest uh, program, our latest effort in uh, suicide prevention and uh, educating gun owners and their families about mental health. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a stroke of great fortune that uh, when I joined uh, the National Shooting Sports Foundation way back in 1998, that Project Child Safe was just getting off the ground. And I fortunately was able to be involved in it and ended up uh, really overseeing the program uh, as it evolved. And wow. uh, it's a program mm -hmm. close to my heart. Uh, as it is uh, really to uh, just about everyone at NSSF um, because it goes right to the heart of responsible gun ownership and sure. encourages and reminds people to store their guns uh, securely when they're not in use. So I'm happy sure. to be here to talk more about it. Sure, yeah, because my first question is, is tell our listeners the origins of Project Child Safe and obviously the importance of the work they do. Yeah, so we uh, we came from humble beginnings uh, with Project Child Safe. We launched the program as a pilot uh, in 1999 in five cities across the country, and we, uh, at the core of the effort, was uh, providing free firearm safety kits that included uh, a cable gun lock and uh, a safety brochure uh, mm -hmm. packaged with it, and uh, it became. Uh, such uh, a success uh, that uh, today we can say that we've partnered with more than 15,000 law enforcement departments to wow. uh, provide our resources to communities across the country. Uh, and that includes the five U.S. territories as well. So mm -hmm. Project Child Safe has now been around. Next year will be its 25th year, actually. And wow. in that time, we've distributed 40 million uh, gun lock safety kits. Um, and I think we've made an impact on helping to promote secure storage by, by gun owners. Mm -hmm. no, man, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. You know, my Thank next you. question here is what resources does uh, Project Child Safe offer and, and also distribute? You kind of covered that, but uh, if you can expand a little bit on that. Yeah, so at the core of the program uh, is the availability of free gun locks uh, to our law enforcement departments. Uh, so that's how communities can get involved in Project Child Safe. Uh, law enforcement uh, can request uh, free gun locks and safety mm -hmm. literature via projectchildsafe.org. 
and you know it just it doesn't cost them uh, anything and they can stand up and be leaders uh, on firearm safety in their community but in addition to the to the gun lock uh, kits we have a lot of safety literature one of our uh, most requested is uh, an infographic that uh, runs down the different types of safe storage options that people have, ranging from the cable gun lock to mm -hmm. lockable gun safes to lock boxes to um, uh, safety devices like your your company uh, produces for uh, safety in vehicles, um, uh, all the way up to full size gun safes. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of safety videos at projectchildsafe.org, where all the resources um, reside, and uh, you know videos on how to talk to your kids about gun safety and how to make a, a, a decision on what is the best uh, secure storage device for your your home circumstances. So mm -hmm. lots of resources at projectchildsafe.org. Right, right, okay. Um, some of us re might remember McGruff, the crime dog. Was this a predecessor to uh, Project Child Safe, and how has the messaging evolved over the years? Um, there was a predecessor uh, in a sense that where the McGruff uh, campaign, which is not our campaign, it's not the industry's campaign, it's a uh, character that's actually licensed by the National Crime Prevention Council. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I remember, heck, uh, in school hearing about uh, and seeing McGruff, so it goes way, way back. Yeah, um, but, yep, but it, I agree, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, right. You probably uh, saw yep. the same uh, long videos and right. people wearing costumes, right, um, uh -huh. uh, to look like McGruff the crime dog. But they didn't really talk about uh, firearm safety at that time. So NSSF uh, approached the National Crime Prevention Council, and uh, we reached an agreement to license McGruff so he and uh, the other character, his nephew Scruff, could talk about uh, gun safety mm -hmm. uh, aimed at really young children uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, and to deliver the message of stop, don't touch, get away, tell an adult, uh, which is still the best message for young children when it comes to, you know, coming across on a um, uh, on unsecured firearms. So sure. uh, McGruff has been with us a long time. We got rid of those long videos with the, the characters and live characters and costumes. And we now have animated videos that are very short, which is, you know, what uh, kids and adults want these days. And uh, they're on the website. And uh, we, we know that people use them uh, around the country in schools and uh, uh, in communities and, and so forth. So that we're, we're happy to be partnering with McGruff. Right. Well, they made a made, made a big impact because me, you know, showing my age over 40 years ago, I remember, you know, all those campaigns back then. So obviously that was very, uh, very effective. Uh, my next question yep. for you, for parents and families, what recommendations would you give for having conversations with your kids about firearm safety? And at what age is, uh, and at what age is it appropriate? Right. Um, a lot of those uh, um, uh, questions can be answered by watching the uh, safety video at projectchildsafe.org on how to talk to your kids about gun safety. And Julie Golob, a champion shooter and uh, uh, a mom and a, a former uh, Army marksmanship uh, athlete, um, uh, does the video for us and does a great job. So she she reminds us that you know, parents are, it's uh, best to have regular conversations with your kids uh, mm -hmm. to reinforce the stop, don't touch, get away, tell an adult uh, message uh, so they can be safe uh, if they come across an unattended firearm. And, uh, you know, regular conversations is, a, that's uh, frequency is up to the parent. Sure. Uh, you know, it, it might be, you know, it could be every month, it could be every uh, quarter or something along those sure. lines that the parents will know. Um, and, you know, around grade school age uh, or whenever parents think their kids are mature enough to, um, you know, to take in that information uh, is 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 best. It really is up to the parents. I know Julie mm -hmm. in the video said she started talking to her uh, kids when they were as young as three years old. So it's up to uh, every parent really. And and the goal is that we want kids to be competent to make the, the right decision, 
you know, when they're at a friend's house or somewhere else that they may come in, uh, in contact with an unattended sure. firearm. Yeah. Uh, you know, the message for teens is different. And Julie discusses that in the video as well. Mm -hmm. And it's really, you know, teens are curious. They may even want to get involved in shooting sports. And maybe they think they know a lot about guns, but they probably don't. Uh, right. So it's really best to for teens. Uh, the message is don't touch uh, a firearm without supervision, adult supervision by someone right. who really understands firearms and then to know the uh, some of the rules of, of gun safety, such as obviously don't point the gun at anyone mm -hmm. uh, and assume guns are loaded. Uh, mm -hmm. So the messages are different uh, for, for different groups. And uh, I really would encourage people to go to projectchildsafe.org to uh, watch that Julie Golub video. Right. That's all fantastic. You know, the point is to have those conversations and reinforce those conversations. Great, great. Um, in what way in what ways does Project Child Safe partner with law enforcement? Yeah, so law enforcement is uh, they're the uh, key uh, to providing access to the community for Project Child Safe. Um, and so uh, like I said, any law enforcement department can go to projectchildsafe.org, request free gun locks and safety literature, and then run campaigns in the community to raise awareness about the importance of securely storing guns when they're not in use. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we prompt our law enforcement partners to ro roll out different campaigns during the course of the year. So. Um, you know, we have a safe summer campaign uh, when kids are just about to get out of school. That's a good mm -hmm. time for parents to check on their storage uh, uh, options and see if they're doing a good job uh, uh, preventing access by kids and others who are not authorized to have access to guns. Uh, another campaign is really going to start right about now. It's called Hunt Safe, and that's you know, uh, during the hunting season, guns can be going in and out of the house more often than mm -hmm. uh, perhaps at mm -hmm. other times of the year. So it's a good sure. time to, uh, you know, make sure, uh, as we like to say, the hunt's not over until the guns are unloaded and securely stored. So, um, mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, we have uh, back to school campaigns and, uh, and other uh, campaigns that we prompt our law enforcement partners to um, to roll out uh, in their communities to just remind people to check on how they're storing their guns and see if they can't do a better job. Man, all great stuff, great stuff. So obviously, safe, uh, safe firearm storage is a huge message, messaging point for Project Child Safe. You know, it may sound like common sense, but with such a focus on this from Project Child Safe and other safety organizations, what do you think is the biggest misconception or mis missed information for gun owners? Yeah, uh, great question. Uh, you know, the thing that we like to stress is that hiding a gun or storing it casually, you know, on top of a refrigerator, or in a shoebox, in a closet, or in a in a nightstand, that is not secure or responsible storage. Um, and you know, kids are curious; they're going to find uh, guns and other things that you may mm -hmm. not want them to access uh, in the house. You know, uh, so and in vehicles, I would add as well. Uh, so it's really important to just not take the storage of firearms casually. Uh, there are many, many options to store guns securely. You know, we mentioned a few, uh, the cable lock, uh, mm -hmm. the a lock box, especially if you're concerned with ready readiness uh, or quick access uh, of your home protection firearm. That's a good solution. Uh, if you have a lot of guns, if you're, you know, a big target shooter and, uh, you know, a really avid hunter, you're probably going to have lots of different firearms for uh, you know, different pursuits, different game, different types mm -hmm. of uh, shooting sports. So you really probably should be looking at a, um, a full-size gun safe or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, options to keep all those firearms uh, sure, secure. Sure. And, yeah. Man, great advice. Great advice. Just a couple more questions here, Bill, and I'm going to wrap. I'm going to probably tie these both together. Um, do you have any upcoming campaigns, events, initiatives coming up? And then also, how do how do we get people involved to help you out? 
Yeah, so um, every year we do a focus community um, uh, with Project Child, say, where we build coalitions of community members from uh, law enforcement to municipal leaders to uh, hunting groups and firearm retailers and people involved in suicide prevention because that's an mm -hmm. important uh, uh, issue these days. Uh, so, and we really focus on a community. So recently we did such a community in Galveston. We've done mm -hmm. them in uh, Columbia, South Carolina, uh, mm -hmm. Albuquerque and Baton Rouge. And what mm -hmm. happens is, is that we have a big kickoff. We usually have a press conference and, uh, and that helps raise awareness about secure storage. But these coalitions of community members help keep the message going uh, in the community for a year or two or three. And that's really important. So we're not just like one and done, you know, we all just don't go sure. into the community, have a press mm -hmm. conference and get out. And, and because, you know, we're here to remind people uh, to make sure their guns are stored securely. Sure. But uh, that can happen really in, in any community. And we encourage anybody uh, any individual to uh, help promote Project Child Safe in their communities. Um, you know, one way to do it is to encourage your law enforcement uh, department to participate in it. it like I mm -hmm. said, it doesn't cost them anything. Uh, and we provide all the materials to uh, to en encourage secure storage and uh, you know responsible ownership. Uh, in in the community, um, you know, I would say also you can get involved really by just setting an example that you know in the way mm -hmm. that you handle your own guns and and uh, store them uh, properly. You know whether it's in the home or in a vehicle when you're transporting it. Uh, I would say you know talk to your kids on a regular basis and then um, you know it, go to projectchildsafe.org. Uh, mm -hmm. to find all the resources that we have there. And I would just mention, uh, if I could, that, sure. you know, the, there's, we hear a lot about mental health and um, unfortunately about um, suicide mm -hmm. today in the country. And uh, more than 50% of all firearm fatalities are suicide deaths. And uh, the importance of secure storage and helping to prevent suicide can't be understated. Right. Because when a person's in crisis and they, uh, if they cannot access uh, their, that means of self-harm, uh, mm -hmm. it gives them time for the crisis to pass or for somebody to intervene and, right. and to get professional help. So sure. um, we say accidents are preventable and suicide is preventable. And uh, it really does begin with the secure storage of firearms. Right, right. Well, Bill, you know, I know Council Ball itself has been a, a proud supporter of Project Child Safe for many years now. Matter of fact, when you go to our website, you'll see uh, your, you know, your badge uh, proudly displayed there. And we're proud members, you know, obviously to help you support and hopefully can bring some more attention to you. I know we're all, I know we're all busy in our environment today. I really appreciate you taking the time here to answer these questions and then to be on you know, on, on this uh, today. And uh, any closing uh, comments before we sign off here, sir? Uh, well, I think we've covered it. Uh, I just want to say thank you again for your support and for, you know, having me on this podcast where we can help spread the message about uh, firearm safety and, and responsible ownership. So uh, I would just say again, um, you know, uh, see uh, projectchildsafe.org. Uh, mm -hmm. for uh, lots of resources and uh, uh, no and thank you again sure and again bill bassard you're in your 25th year i hope you have 25 more ahead of you sir and again thank you so much for spending uh, uh some of your valuable time with us today uh, and good luck in the future thank you so much thank you scott really appreciate it